G'day everyone, welcome to my lab. Recently at an electronic shop, I came across this smartphone radiation shield. It claims that it reduces mobile phone radiation by up to 95% without reducing the phone's performance. It goes on to reiterate that it's scientifically proven to reduce mobile phone radiation and with virtually no impact on your signal strength. Now for the past four years of my PhD, I've been working with radio systems and I have absolutely no idea how something like this would work, so I thought I'd get one and test it in my lab. Now I can't test this radiation shield in exactly the same way that they claim to do on their website. Their website says that they measured the radiation absorbed by a human analogue. They seem to use something like a block of ballistics gel to model how a head would absorb radiation. I can't do that. All I can do is measure the radiation output of my phone. So that's what I have here, a setup to do that. So this is just a probe that picks up the radiation from my phone and it should show the signal on the screen here and I can measure the total power output of the radiation that's being picked up. This should be a fair test because in order to prevent someone's head absorbing radiation, the only way to do that is to prevent the radiation getting to their head in the first place. So I don't have the radiation shield installed yet. This is a dry run to see what the phone's output is normally. So if I just get in the same place every time because it's quite sensitive to the position of the probe relative to the antenna in the phone, I'll call my phone. Now I'm calling it on a landline so there's no other mobile phone in the room emitting that radiation and that is the signal from my phone connecting to the tower making the call. Okay, I've got a good, I'm measuring the total power output of this bandwidth, so I'm getting all of the phone's radiation output in this. This has a center frequency of about 842 megahertz, so a typical mobile phone frequency used here in Australia. The channel power is bouncing around a bit, but it goes, it's around the minus 30 dBm mark, so we're using a logarithmic scale for power output. It's around minus 30 dBm, it's bouncing up to about minus 25. And the power spectral density is about minus 100 dBm per hertz. Now, the radiation shield claims that it can reduce mobile phone radiation by up to 95%. Their results on their website show that goes down to about 87% for some mobile phones. So I would expect around a 90% drop. Now I'm using a logarithmic power scale, so a 90% drop in power in a logarithmic scale is 10 dB. So if this smart shield works, I would expect it to drop down to about minus 40, minus 35 dBm on the channel power. But that's not all. I'm testing the front side of the phone here. The device has to be placed on the back side of the phone, so I will also test the back of the phone. And that gives a measurable increase. I'll just get that in the right position. Okay, that gives a measurable, a measurable increase. It is hovering, it's going up to about minus 24, and is hovering in the mid-20s, more than around the 30 it was previously. Right. And you can see how sensitive this is to the distance of the phone from the probe. Right, so now if I end the call, the signal goes away. Okay, I've taken the chip out of its packet. The instructions say that the chip needs to be placed on the back of the phone over the antenna. So um, the instructions always show the chip being put at the bottom of the phone and I have checked with this model of phone that the antenna is there. The antenna is just above the LG sign. The antenna is just above the LG sign on the back of this phone. So now I just need to place the sticker on. This is the chip. 
Smooth it down, get good contact. Okay, now I'll call my phone again, get this in position, call my phone again, and see if the measurable radiation has dropped. Well, this is interesting, the call can't get through. text messages got through to show me that I have missed a call. Hmm. I'm getting no signal, um, though in my lab it's always very hard to get signal anyway. So, maybe this does reduce the performance of your phone. It might actually be doing something. It's, a, it's shielding the antenna. It says it should have virtually no impact on your signal strength, but it is obviously having an impact on my signal strength. I can't get through. Okay, let's try this again. I've moved to a different room where I've got a better signal on my phone and so can get a connection through the uh, Smart Shield Radiation Shield chip. And we can see it's connected on the screen like before. Again, I'm calling it you calling my phone using a landline so that there's no other mobile in the room that's causing that signal. On the back of the phone through the chip, we are getting a channel power now of minus 40-ish. So everything in that green window adds up to a power of about minus 40 dBm. If I turn the phone over and do the front because previously on the front the uh, signal was not as strong. The signal power has dropped, it's now around the minus 45 mark dipping to minus 50. So we lose about 5 to 10 dB just by turning the phone over. Right, now what I'm going to do is remove the smart chip. I didn't do this previously because the instructions said that that can damage the chip and well, I didn't want to damage the chip before it went back on before I did these tests. Okay, so the chip's off. Let's put that back on. Get it in position again. Okay, so on the front face it's bouncing around between minus 45-ish and minus 50, so that's about the same as with the chip. So the chip's not reducing the amount of radiation getting to the front of the phone. If I turn the phone over again and do the back, it's minus 33 or so. So that's higher than it was with the chip. So this chip does appear to be preventing radiation getting through. Yeah. Yeah, it's dropped a bit. It's dropped about mm, 37. So, so from 35 or so, 33, 35 to 35 to 37. So it's lost 3 to 6 dB. So that is a 50 to 75% reduction in power. So this shield does appear to be doing something. It is blocking the radiation at the back of the phone. But it's not changed the amount of radiation that was getting to the front of the phone. And every radiation shield I know of needs to go between the radiation source and the thing it's trying to protect, i.e. your head. So this should go on the front of the phone. So this radiation shield probably does absolutely nothing. And there are easier ways to reduce the amount of radiation getting to your head. Because, like this probe, your head is in the near field, i.e. it's 
so close to the transmitter that it effectively capacitively couples to the transmitter and becomes part of the transmitter, it's very sensitive to changes in distance. So like small changes in distance create largish changes in power. So I've got, it's bouncing around but it's now down near 40. So I have reduced the power level by close to 90% just by moving it a couple of centimeters. So you can more effectively reduce the radiation getting to your head by more than 90% just by holding your phone a little further from your head. So to do that you could either put it on speaker phone or if you're really worried use a headset. That will save you spending $70 on one of these radiation shields. Besides, I'm not particularly worried. There is no evidence that mobile phone radio waves cause you any health problems at all. This seems like a waste of money to me. I only bought it because they were on sale for about $40 rather than their recommended retail price of $70. That's it for now. Bye bye.